Yo, what's going on my fellow graphic designers? In this video, I'm showing you guys how you can make a custom background to use in your logos, banners, thumbnails, whatever, super easily. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so once you're on photop.com, you just want to click new project and the size will change depending on what you're doing. So I'm just going to go with 1600 by 1600 because it works for like logos and thumbnails if you stretch it out enough. And basically what we're going to do to start is add a color fill. So go down here to your adjustment layer and go to color fill at the very top and change it to black. This will make everything sit a lot nicer compared to a white background. And now one of the files in that download is going to be particles with like a blue tint on it. Yeah, it's going to look like this. So what we're going to do is I actually made two. You're just going to want to stretch it. So it fills up the entire box. Like that. Hit that check mark once you filled it completely. And now we're going to bring in another texture. So that's also in the download. You need a lot of effects to make this actually happen. So we're just going to extend this to make it bigger. And we're going to change the blend mode to pin light so that it kind of shows through to the background. And I know it's kind of dark. We'll fix that in a little bit. So don't worry. Now what we're going to do to change the color is go over here to the rectangle tool, or you can add a new color fill again, which I recommend doing that instead. Turn it to red. Now we have the same situation going on with this color fill and this one. But for this one, we're going to change the blend mode to color at the very bottom. And it's going to change the color to red. Now what we're going to do is bring in some like hexagon effects. So it kind of looks like this. And you don't want them to be the exact same on each side. And we're just going to make it about this size and move it up here like that. Hit that check mark. And move it below the color fill because we want it to be red as well. Now hit control and J to duplicate that and control alt T to resize it. And we're just going to move it down here. Not the exact same as this one, a little bit different. So it looks different, you know, hit that check mark and I'm actually going to make these bigger probably. So let me make this bigger. It takes some adjusting, that's for sure. You can never get these like first try. You got to try a lot of different effects and see what works the best. I'm just going to do something like this. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we are going to add another layer at the very top. So go to your adjustment layers and go to exposure. Now we're just going to turn this top one up a bit. And I'm going to do about 4.000. And for the gamma correction, I'm going to do 0.952. Okay. And for the little effects right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the blend mode to lighten on both of them. And then I'm going to turn the opacity down to about 10% on both of these. So it blends better with the background. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on either of these hexagon layers or whatever these are and click this raster mask button. And now what you want to do is go to your brush tool on the left. Make sure this top box is black because we're going to be fading these out. And then up here you can adjust all that. I just hold alt and right click and I just drag my mouse to resize it. Or you can do it manually up here. Your size hardness is going to be about 9% and the opacity, I'm going to turn that down to about 50. Now, if I just click or drag, it'll fade out this effect. I got to click this one, do the same thing for this one. It really does help blend it. I'm a fan of it. And we're also going to do that with this texture layer. Oh crap. Okay. There. So now kind of do that with this one as well. And even the particles layer, it's nice to just kind of fade these things out. It 
maybe not as much on the particle layer because it kind of takes the color away but i would turn your opacity down a little bit on this like that and just start to click around now if you think this is too much you can like go into these individual circles right here if you think these are too much darken them I'm just like clicking a bunch see starting to look better starting to darken this side So you get the idea um there's tons of ways you can do this it's really preference now we could even turn the opacity down on it a little bit if we wanted to or turn the exposure up so it's up to you what you want to do these backgrounds usually look pretty crazy so that's what i was going for and yeah you could just adjust everything like that make that particle layer less crazy and adjust the exposure layer again because it's kind of dark again or you could even take the color fill out and it'll change the color or you could just change the color of the color fill and it'll change it to a different color like green looks pretty cool yeah so it's pretty easy to do it's just you have to experiment with a lot of things to get what you want and these backgrounds in particular are pretty crazy looking but it's really just a few layers of texture some particles and some effects if they want to add more like these little hexagons or whatever and also adding the exposure and curves which i'm going to add back that's really all there is to it so hopefully it wasn't too confusing for you guys if you enjoyed it, I make a lot of other content like this, so you should definitely subscribe and leave a like. And that's all I got for you guys today, so I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.